I have asked you guys in a poll on YouTube and you have voted that you wanted to see a tutorial on tarot cards and the most popular card was the moon. So today's tutorial will be inspired by this interesting tarot card. Tarot cards are full of symbols and meanings uh, that are open to interpretation and can serve as an inspiration for creative ideas. So let's look into the symbols of the moon. We can see the full moon in the sky, which is a symbol of intuition, dreams and the unconscious. There is also a pool representing the watery subconscious mind. A small crayfish representing beginnings of consciousness, a dog that symbolizes the tame mind and the wolf which represents the wild aspects of our minds. There are other meanings as well but we'll look at them in the process of painting. If you'd like to know more you might like to check out this video's sponsor. Keen is the world's largest network of tarot readers and astrologists. You can go to their website and create your account. You will be able to choose an advisor that will discuss your life's events and provide some insights. You can choose the reader depending on your needs and interests. You'll be able to connect with them through a phone call or a text chat. And it's great that you can do all that from the comfort of your own home and your consultations and readings are 100% anonymous and confidential. So if you have a special question or just want to know what the future holds in store for you, go to the link on your screen and as a new customer, you can try your first 10 minutes for only $1.99, which is up to $99 in savings. To get this offer, use trykeen.com slash attire. It's also available as a clickable link under this video. Okay, so I will create a quick sketch of this composition to make it easier when we start painting. The template of this drawing will be available on my Patreon page. The tarot readings are always open for interpretation, but the main meaning of the moon card is usually a representation of your fears, illusions, painful memories that sit in your deep subconscious mind. It warns you to not make rash decisions and trust your intuition and allow it to guide you. The moon a uh, card appears in a tarot reading and it's representing a person that usually means that this person is mysterious. It's astrologically associated with the sign of Pisces. Although some may also consider this card associated with Cancer since, you know, the Cancer is ruled by the moon. The mountains in the distance represent the adversity, the, the hardship. Okay, and now let's sketch in the dog and the wolf. So remember guys, the dog represents the tame side of your mind and the wolf represents the wild aspects of your psychological feeling, mood and so on. The template of this drawing will be available on my Patreon page. Now to paint with me you would need some watercolor paint, white gouache, watercolor brushes and lots of inspiration. If you'd like to see a gold leaf tutorial it will be available on my Patreon page. So those of you who are patrons make sure that you go over there and check it out and those of you who are not my patrons still go over to patreon and check it out you will probably find lots of very interesting tutorials we also do giveaways voting for different videos and a lot of other ways that you can learn new things and also entertain yourself so make sure to go and check it out let's start painting starting with the sky 
for this you would want to use a dark color you can use black blue um, because remember it is night time now i'm not going to add water as usual to the paper itself because i want color to be more intense but that means that the paint itself should be quite watery and there should be enough of it to last for the whole sky because you want to work quickly and make sure that the paint doesn't dry up in patches at least not the kind of patches that you don't want to have you want to make sure that the edges are crispy and that you have quite a good control over the paint at this stage now you see how i've covered all around with this dark more intense color now for the inside here i'm going to use color that is a little bit lighter it is called cerulean blue and it will give you this really nice transition you don't have to do it you can still go with the same color it's up to you but this is just something that i want to show you guys this is why you need to work very quickly so that you can merge these two colors um, before the first one dries and leaves a lot of streaking on the paper also here you can see that i'm very carefully going around the mountains as well okay so now that the sky is dry we can move on to the next step and that is the moon so this color is a mix of quinacridone gold and hansa yellow deep but you can use cadmium yellow deep if that's what you have and i'm going to go for the face in the middle you can add a little bit of the shadow and light within the face itself if you'd like i'm going to use a little bit of burnt umber to just add a little bit of depth and a tiny bit of pyrrole orange for a bit of a blush on the cheek now this larger part of the moon's face will be uh, covered with a lighter shade of Hansa Yellow Deep and Hansa Yellow Mid. I am applying a lighter color closer to the face and a deeper color closer to the sky. And now I'm using Burnt Amber to create more definition on the face of the moon. Now this part of the moon will be done in gold at the end of the tutorial. While all of this is drying, I'm going to move on to the mountains. I will go for the sort of a darker kind of variation. So for that, I'm going to use the same color that I used for the sky and mix in a little bit of black with it. first layer is going to be reasonably light and then I will deepen it as I go along now I'm going to use a smaller brush and use that same color to really intensify some areas of the mountains Next, I'm going to grab a little bit of white gouache and mix it with a little bit of a yellowy color, you know, the color that I have been using for the moon. And now with this, I'm going to pick up little ridges on the mountains. And only from the side where the moonlight shines now it's time to add a little bit of the stars because as you can see our sky is 100 percent dry again i'm going to use a little bit of white gouache with some bright yellow now the first layer of paint should really not be very intense you can uh, add a little bit of water to it uh, because we will build it up to make it really really glow 
make sure to create clusters of little stars as well now i want to focus on the center of the composition so as you can see i'm focusing all the stars over here it is entirely up to you you can fill the whole sky with this technique next we are going to grab paint that is thicker less water and more white gouache and do a very similar thing but applying little orbs inside the larger spots that we have just painted remember to create these clusters of stars it creates a really beautiful effect in the artwork now let's move on to the towers and the green pastures the field itself now for the towers i'm going to use a similar color that i've used for the mountains but i'm also going to add a little bit of brown to it so it's blue black and brown the towers in the moon card represent gateways so a symbol of once you came through this you're not the same you can never go back kind of a, like you can't step into the same river twice it's sort of a, like that kind of a meaning although um, there are lots of different types of meanings uh, connected with these tarot cards and there are so many interpretations now you can see that i'm leaving these edges white uh, or lighter paper the reason for that is that i will use that to create highlights from the light of the moon hitting the side of the rock now using that same color but just a little bit more intense uh, with a small brush i'm going to uh, portray the sort of a rocky texture on these towers and using a little bit of that yellowish light to bring out some highlights sometimes these columns, these towers are represented as just rocks or sometimes they actually have a shape of the towers so I think I will go for both variations here and I will make them look quite rocky but also add windows to them so that it looks like they could actually be man-made structures as well now it's time to work on the grass no. i am going to mix hansa yellow and the blue that i've been using for the sky it's, it's a reasonably washed out color with quite a bit of water again i'm working on a dry paper the paper is not pre-wetted uh, to make sure that I have quite a good control over where the paint goes because there are so many details around I don't want to have issues with controlling the paint okay so next is to add the shadows the shadows from the towers and from the you know the dog and the wolf I'm going to use the same color with the addition of a little bit more black and blue and same on the other side softening the line and the same thing with the dogs remember this is a magical scene so you don't have to follow along the rules of you know the realistic painting you can exaggerate things make things more almost more like stage sort of a set adding a little bit of texture on the fields uh, it will also make the light travel a little bit better visually on the on the sketch now i'm painting the dog the under coat for the dog with uh, a mix of brown and a little bit of blue adding a little bit of definition while the area is wet so 
so here is our doggy at this stage we will come back to it a little bit later but right now let's work on the wolf so wolves are very similar to the dogs but the fur color is you know when we think of a wolf we think the wolf is gray i mean there are brown wolves there are black wolves white wolves you know all sorts of colored wolves but uh, when we think of wolf we think it's gray so i'm gonna go for a little bit of black paint together with tiny a little bit of blue applying darker color in some strategic areas for the fur and the shadow because remember we have the light directing from the moon and um, leaving some areas lighter at this stage I'm just using black with a little bit of water and as I said before now we need to go back to the dog and then the wolf and uh, apply a little bit more of the shadow just to deepen the shadow a tiny little bit extra applying same type of highlights as we did on the dog with a bit of white gouache and yellow and our wolf is done Okay, now let's move on to the water, the um, lobster, the cancer, and um, later we can move on to the pathway as well. First, I'm going to use a light wash of cerulean blue with a little bit of the yellow that we have been using for painting the moon. The first layer should be quite uh, soft and transparent now while it is all wet I'm adding a little bit of the darker color darker blue to the edges of the artwork Okay, so now that the water is dry, I am going to apply another layer. Now that next layer will be using darker and lighter colors. So for darker colors, I'm going to use Prussian blue with a little bit of black. I'm especially going to darken the areas on the, around the corners just to create that sort of a focus in the middle of the composition And now I'm mixing white with a little bit of blue for that lighter color to go over the, these dark areas. Now I'm going to work on the lobster. So I've got some blue paint that I was using for the water and a little bit of yellow mixed in with it to give it a bit of a green tinge. And again, a little bit of highlight. And now I'm going to add a few highlights to finish off the uh, water highlights over the actual lobster. Couple more details, and it's 
adding a little more depth to the eyes. This is just black on my brush. A little bit of yellow on the highlights to represent the moon light shining there. So here is the water and the crab, the lobster. Next we need to work on the pathway. So now let's work on the cliff edge of the ground. Now for that I'm just going to get a little bit of burnt umber and add a little bit of um, that mixture of black and blue just a little bit just to tone it down go over the whole area and a light wash adding shadows with a mixture of a darker brown. And now moving on to the center of the pathway with a little bit of the warmer color. So going for burnt umber and adding a little bit of quinacridon gold if you don't have chronopodon gold, you can always use a little bit of orange. And now using the previous color that we used for the sides here, we can just add a little bit of that color. like this and then give it a little bit of a swirl the idea is that you want to have a little bit of the patching that's going on keep adding shadows until you're happy with what you've got You can use a little bit of white paint to add some details. Okay, so here we go. Um, it is pretty much um, finished. You can leave it at that stage. Um, but what I'm also going to do is I'm going to use some gold leaf to apply over some areas and to create finishing touches. Now that part of the tutorial will be available on Patreon. Uh, you can always use gold paint if you want to or anything that your heart desires. Uh, but uh, if you would like to see that part, uh, it will be available on Patreon. So I hope to see you guys there, um, those of you who are my patrons. And I would like to say thank you to this video's sponsor and also I would like to thank my wonderful wonderful patrons who are supporting this channel who are taking active role in which videos we're going to see next on patreon so thank you very much guys for your support I really really do appreciate it I hope you all have a wonderful wonderful day and thank you so much for painting with me